Let's explore the guilt redemption cycle. This is a pattern for better understanding arguments. What you can expect from this lecture is first we're going to discuss the concept of guilt. After that, we're going to discuss the guilt redemption cycle itself. And then last, we're going to look at three different examples. Okay, let's go. So first of all, this concept of guilt, this is given to us by Kenneth Burke, and Kenneth Burke has given many different contributions to rhetoric. Probably the most substantial is this concept of dramatism, thinking that uh, the world is a stage, the world is um, kind of like a theatrical stage, and understanding it within that context is a, a clear way to better understand communication and argument. According to Kenneth Burke, this concept of guilt, it's not exactly like feeling bad for doing something wrong, but guilt is a, a broad uh, a negative feeling. It's this feeling of either tension, maybe anxiety, shame, embarrassment, or really any other negative emotions. Okay, so when we're talking about this guilt redemption cycle, it's important to understand that when we think of guilt here, it's not like someone saying, hey, you should feel bad for doing that. It's any of these negative emotions can be grouped under this concept of guilt. Okay, so the guilt redemption cycle, Berg explains that argument is a tool to eliminate the feelings of guilt in order to feel redeemed. So we have these negative feelings, and argument is a tool to help rid and purge ourselves of these feelings so we can ultimately feel cleansed and feel better and uh, removed of this guilt. So how does it work? Well, something happens to us first that makes us feel bad, right? Some sort of negative emotion. And we have two choices in order to feel better. First, we can either blame ourselves, or second, we can blame someone or something else. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so we'll go into more depth here, but really this is what's happening, okay? There's something that has us feeling some sort of negative emotion, any of those from that list or any sort of negative emotion. And then we have to figure out a way through argument to justify uh, something in order to make ourselves feel better, to attribute blame. So it's either our fault or someone or someone else's fault. So this redemption uh, comes through these two different choices. That self-blame, so blaming ourselves, Burke calls mortification. Okay, so this is where you're, you're taking blame for this. And you're saying, you know what, this was my fault. And then you're able to move forward uh, after that. But also we have this concept of blaming others, someone or something else, which he calls uh, victimage, which is basically scapegoating. Okay, so this is where you're blaming someone else or something else for this negative feeling that you're having. And the arguments then are shaped around one of these two different uh, decisions that would be made in order to gain that redemption. So this all fits together. If you've seen, if you're in my class or if you've seen some of the other lectures that we have here, think back to the dramatistic pentad. Now, this tool allowed us to better understand the motives and actions for those who are arguing in order to be redeemed and to purge themselves of the guilt, right? The dramatistic pentad is a tool to be able to see what's happening. So it's very descriptive in nature, but it also has that element of purpose. So looking at why people are arguing. Now, one of the things that uh, Burke would, would say is that we're looking for motives of action, and typically motives are trying to purge ourselves of this guilt. So if you're looking for that purpose element in the dramatistic pentad, quite often you'll see that this would be to purge ourselves of a particular negative uh, feeling, something bad that we don't want to be feeling. Uh, and again, we have those two choices for how we would go about doing that. And again, identification can be used to gain agreement and help convince others to take certain steps to overcome this guilt. So if this is an argument that's being presented to someone else, recognizing that they're going to, they may be sharing in that guilt with you if you're able to get them to identify with your perspective. And then after that, you're able to take them and have them either blame themselves or blame someone or something else in order to feel that redemption. So here are three quick examples. Example number one, and again, we're just looking at this as how uh, the choice would be made whether to uh, either do self-blame or blaming someone or something else. So we've got a motive to eliminate guilt felt from doing poorly on a test. Okay, so how would one argue to uh, get rid of this feeling? Well, through mortification, someone could blame themselves for not studying enough. Okay, and then after that, probably that they should study more the next time around. Argument using victimage, maybe blame the teacher for not helping students prepare well enough. Notice that these are two different strategies, both attributing blame, both trying to uh, justify and overcome the feeling of guilt from doing poorly on a test. Here's example number two. The motive is to eliminate guilt felt from a potential partner not wanting to hang out. So this, for example, would be, let's, let's say you try and ask somebody to go out for coffee or maybe go out for a drink or something like that, or maybe just hang out and study together, and that person rejects you. Okay, So you feel negative emotion. Again, guilt, that all-encompassing term doesn't mean like just 
from doing something wrong. It's just this negative emotion. So we have argument from mortification. Maybe blame yourself for not being good looking enough, smart enough, or charming enough. Or maybe an argument using victimage. Blame the person for being ignorant and not knowing a good thing when it shows up. This is probably what it was because I think you're great. <laughs> okay, so notice how both of these were trying to eliminate the guilt that was felt. So this uncomfortable emotion, this emotion that uh, you might not want in a situation like this. So you can either blame yourself or you could blame the other person. And, the, you know, you could probably come up with other ways that you could, other things that you could blame here other than the person um, to, to use other types of victimage here as well. Example number three, eliminate guilt felt from feeling like you don't have enough money, right? Oh, I don't have enough money. I feel bad about this. It's a negative emotion. So how could we uh, justify this? How can we make ourselves feel better? How can we purge ourselves of this guilt? Well, we can use an argument for mortification saying that we're going to blame ourselves for not being able to find a job that pays more. It's like, oh, I just can't find a job that pays more. I just can't, you know, this is my fault. Or an argument from victimage, you could blame your job for not paying enough. Gosh, this job just doesn't pay enough. Oh, I hate working here. Okay, so you're eliminating guilt felt from feeling like you don't have enough money by either blaming yourself or blaming the job. Or maybe you could blame the economy. Maybe you could blame the president. Maybe you could blame school. Maybe you could blame your friends, whatever, right? Using victimage can come in a lot of different forms. But notice that these are tools that are trying to be used to eliminate guilt, and this is that negative emotion. Okay, so what we covered today, we discussed this concept of guilt within the guilt redemption cycle. We also went over and discussed the guilt redemption cycle itself. And we explored three different examples using the guilt redemption cycle. So notice how this works. Um, and this is very common if you really think about it, when people are trying to advocate for a position, when they're trying to do something persuasive. If you think about it within the guilt redemption cycle, there's usually a way that you're able to, uh, to, to frame it and be able to see it within this particular format and context.